How's it going, movie fans? My name is Jonathan. I am a man of movies. And as of recent, a lot of my YouTube friends in the film community have been partaking in this tagged event where you shout out your number one film in each genre out of 10. And at the very end, you tag some content creators that you think that other people should go and check out and that you want to partake in the activity yourself. I was tagged by Geeky Hijinks, who I'm a fairly new subscriber to. He is so very personable that you watch one of his videos and you really feel like you can just sit down and have a beer with the guy and talk some films together. Maybe sometime in the future, we can hit that up, Geeky Hijinks. But Let's just get right into my number one films of each category out of 10. Starting off with comedy, 21 Jump Street. In my very early years of high school, 21 Jump Street was a film that before it came out in theaters, many people I was watching on YouTube were saying that it was going to be trash because it looked like trash. And I can say, I guess in hindsight, it didn't look too good, but after watching it, I mean, this is comedy gold, people. You got Jonah Hill from Superbad and other great comedy classics. And then you have Channing Tatum, who at the time was just... Um, I don't know, like a model type of actor that never really showed his chops, but man, is the guy funny. And man, is this duo just amazing together with a chemistry and comedy films that I have yet to see since then, in my opinion. Coming in in the horror genre for me, a lot of people know this, but 1996's Scream is my favorite horror film of all time. It is the reason that horror is alive and well today, and I will always appreciate that aspect of the film, but just the overall creativity and originality from Russ Craven to put this on the screen with elements that really turn the genre on its head with cult classic characters and, I mean, a satire that poked fun at the genre and made it new at the same time. When it comes to action, I could have easily picked a franchise film, but... I wanted to look for a standalone film that really hit me hard, that is action, and this is, us recently, 1917, with amazing direction, and the stylistic choice of not having one visible cut within the entire movie, yet not dragging at all, while expanding relationships of people we just met, expanding a journey that is so heartbreaking at times. It's so blood rushing at times on the edge of your seat with some of the most beautiful cinematography in a film I've ever seen in my life. And when it comes to the sci-fi genre, many people know me and they will predict very easily what this film will be and it will always be a Star Wars movie. These are films that I've grown up with. The world and the lore is something I've loved since I was a kid. I actually had an original copy of A New Hope on VHS, ladies and gentlemen. But... It's not going to be A New Hope, and it's not even going to be Empire Strikes Back. Great films, and they add to the story so very seamlessly, but Return of the Jedi for me is a film that constantly, over time, every time I watch it, gets better and better and better. It is the emotional conclusion of the first supposed ending of the Skywalker saga. We see Luke, who is fully a Jedi now, who is so badass, who at the very beginning in Jabba's palace, we see him just wrecking fools. But the story of how hope and faith and love triumphs over the tyranny that is the Empire and Emperor Palpatine, who throughout all these films, Luke has been trying to figure out who Darth Vader was, what he was all about, coming to find out he was his father, Anakin Skywalker, who turned to the dark side. And having that type of determination that you will be a Jedi again, I feel the good in you and you will turn. And seeing in Vader that very conflicted nature of, I, I, I know there is good in me, but I will not acknowledge it because I am so long gone. And at the very end, the return of the Jedi, Anakin Skywalker comes back to the light side and it's just a great epilogue to what is one of the best franchises in Hollywood history. The comic book genre is what's making Hollywood its billions of dollars and when it comes to me, 
My favorite comic book movie has to be the animated Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Spider-Man is my all-time favorite superhero. I was really just picking between either one of Sam Raimi's films or this movie, but this movie just takes it all, in my opinion, with its story of what it takes to be a hero, what it takes to be Spider-Man, I should say, and it sort of twist on the motto, with great power comes great responsibility. When it comes to Westerns, I really don't know much about them because I've only really seen a handful of them. But there is one movie that I love that would be in my top whatever list of all time. And it is a Western from my favorite director of all time, Quentin Tarantino. Django Unchained is a masterpiece in my opinion. A very over-the-top and diabolical take on this journey of a slave who was freed by a bounty hunter who works alongside him now, but always wanting to look for his wife, who's also a slave. And they find her, who's owned by a plantation owner, played by Leonardo DiCaprio, one of the most amazing roles I've ever seen him, but not in a personal way, because he's very suave, cocky, and evil in its purest form. It is angering at times and overall just one of the best crowd pleasers you'll watch. When it comes to adventure, I'm gonna add in a movie that has a subgenre of fantasy, but Lord of the Rings Return of the King? Bro, yes, this movie's three and a half hours long, and if you watch the extended edition, it's four and a half hours long, but the overall conclusion of the story of the fellowship returning the ring to Mount Doom to destroy it, to stop Sauron and his forces of taking over Middle-earth. It sounds nerdy and so like Dungeons and Dragons-esque. But listen, man, this is a film that is masterfully crafted by Peter Jackson. There are times in the whole trilogy, especially in Return of the King, where I have a tear in my eye. Some of the more developed characters in any sort of cinematic movie you will ever ever see Return of the King full of action, adventure, heart, and so much emotion. My favorite film in the romance genre would have to be also a mix between a musical. La La Land is my all-time favorite romance movie, if you want to put it that way, and it's probably top three movies of all time for me. When I saw this movie in theaters with my wife, it was something that I was just left with my jaw dropped thinking of how masterfully crafted this was and how great of a director Damien Chazelle is. The on-screen duo of Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling I fell in love with and every time I see them in movies before and hopefully in the future I know it's something to look forward to. And this is a fantasy driven story of falling in love in the midst of figuring out your dreams and your life and how ultimate success could mean the end of conformity and relationships. Animation is probably one of the bigger reasons why I grew up and still do love the art of filmmaking. So what is the film that has stood with me since I was a kid, stood with me now as an adult, that has enamored me and has given me my love for films? Toy Story. So very easily, Pixar's first feature animated film, Toy Story, is something that I have given my thoughts about. If you want to go check out that video, I'll link it up above and down below so you can check out my review on that. But the original story of a cowboy toy who is now being looked over because of a new Space Ranger toy and the overall story of them trying to get back to their owner's house and having to work together and learning their deepest, darkest fears and coming together as friends. Drama means everything. And there's so many movies that I could definitely put in this category. But I'm looking for a film that resonated with me my whole life that I would say is a pure drama. Yeah, maybe it has some action, just a little bit, or maybe it has some comedy. Maybe it has some sort of elements of other genres, but in its truest, purest form is a drama, I would say is Forrest Gump. It's a film that was introduced to me from my mom. Shout out to my mom, who honestly has given me a lot of the love that I have for films, even nowadays, and a lot of the movies that I have seen I saw when I was a kid, 
Uh, I probably shouldn't have seen Forrest Gump when I was a kid, uh, just thinking in hindsight, but I gotta thank my mom for showing me the movie when I was a kid because it really has grown with me now. Tom Hanks becoming one of my favorite actors of all time, and his role here as Forrest Gump is one of, if not his best roles of all time. I don't care if it was 20 plus years ago, I still think it is, and a story of this guy with some very obvious mental problems, just sitting down on a bench, telling his life story to whoever is willing to listen. And this unbelievable uh, narrative of his life and what he's been through from wars to love and heartbreak to success and riches. And at the very end, when he continues his life and you see what it becomes, it's so gripping and it's so in every way one of my favorite films of all time. But those are just my picks that I appreciate so greatly, the people that wanted to hear them. But now it's my turn to tag five YouTube channels, people that I know, people that I speak to, that I want to hear their thoughts on what their number one films of each category is. And listen, if you did not make the cut, does not mean that I don't like you or your content or that your content isn't great. On the contrary, I love all of my followers' content and I love speaking movies with all of them. And if I could make another video just spewing out every single person on my subscriber list, yes, very much so, I would. And also, many people, I have seen their videos already or I know other people have tagged them in. So that is why I didn't mention some of you guys either. So let's get into my five. I'll link their channels down below if you really want to go and check them out, please do. But my first tag has to be Papa John. I have been subscribed to him for a while and he does a lot of reviews for bigger name blockbuster films and they're very well constructed in his opinions. But he also does sometimes smaller scale watches and he'll talk to you directly about them and his takes on those films too are amazing. My second tag is Screen Kings coming from the Philippines. You got Phil who is so awesome and his co-star Carlos together. They make this very charming and comedic take to all of their reviews. My third tag is Diaz Discusses and Geeky Hijinks. I appreciate how you said that my thoughts are to the point and really convey my honest opinions. But if you want to see somebody that beats me in every way, Diaz Discusses is your man. He has a very thoughtful analysis in all of his films and doesn't go overboard with his time limit, man. My fourth tag is On Pop Culture. The name says it all. My guy Rick Alba reviews everything on pop culture from film to even weekly breakdowns on TV shows like WandaVision and currently right now every episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier with his positives and negatives so well thought out in each of his videos. And my very last and fifth tag has to be Hot Takes for Nerds. This dude has some of the best video essays you will ever watch and he doesn't post every week or sometimes not even every two weeks. But when he does post, you gotta go and watch him and that's why I'm tagging him in here because he has something to say and it's, it's so in depth all his videos, they're not just reviews, they're essays, and I love that. And I really wanna hear what his number one film for each genre would be. But like always, like this video, share this video with family and friends, and subscribe to my channel. Till next time, movie fans.